Hey everybody, welcome back to Grimdark Skies. This is Grimdark, and today I'm going to go over how to, or rather all about point shooting, and uh, how to get better at it, a uh, little bit tips and tricks that a lot of people don't know about it, as well as when it's effective, when it's not, etc, etc, all about it. So, let's go into a raid. We're just going to go into an empty factory, first off to show you guys, and then I'll do a quick run of... Uh, factory again with pve to show you guys basically how to practice it uh this is the kit we're going in with don't even need a backpack it doesn't matter armor doesn't matter when you're practicing you should practice like it's a real game so ideally you don't want to get hit so face shield and stuff it's not necessary though if you're still learning it might help you if you make a mistake i'm gonna bring the ash 12 because i've been rping as gluhar a little bit i know the mask but my guy doesn't look anything like gluhar so it helps but uh Yep, I'm going to bring some grenades. Bring some grenades, too. If you guys don't know how to use your laser to throw grenades, if you don't know what I mean, then I'm about to show you. But make sure you have some grenades if you want to learn and practice that. And bring a bunch of ammo if you plan to practice for a long period of time. Um, beyond that, make sure you have enough meds. And, yeah, if you need food or anything, you can just extract and reset, so not important. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go offline mode. If you guys don't know how to do that, you just go to an array normally, press next. Go to factory, make sure it's daytime, press next, enable offline, and then enable PV. This enables uh, AI scavs to spawn, AI difficulty. Uh, we'll just do possible because I normally train on impossible. And we'll do high, but not tagged and cursed because I don't want them to rush me because I'm trying to talk. But I do want a lot to be around for an easy example. Enable bosses doesn't apply to factory because there's no boss. Otherwise, you can usually get glue hard and stuff to spawn a reserve. Tagged and cursed means that they know where you're at and they rush towards you trying to kill you every time they spawn and stuff. So I wouldn't suggest using any of these for training purposes. If you're brand new, you can hit scav war. That makes all the scavs fight each other. And that's a good way to get used to the gunshots. Um, but yeah, in offline mode, you don't lose any ammo or items and you don't gain any ammo or items and at the end it looks like you gain experience but you actually don't so it's basically just a simulation and good for practice like i said obviously so let's get into the raid and then i'll uh i'll talk about what we're going to cover all right guys so uh hopefully the scavs won't find us for a little while but uh by the way hopefully it's a little brighter for everybody i turned up my settings a little bit copied landmarks so uh, i didn't know the last video would turn out so dark it looks much different in game and outside anyways point shooting oh my god they're coming for me so all about point shooting uh here's the basics right point shooting is a key element of pvp in tarkov your character holds the gun at the ready position basically so it's not like hip fire which is generally inaccurate because the gun's lowered from the hip it's uh as if you're holding the gun up in a ready position to fire and ads all that does is turn your head to look through the reticle um so with that being said point shooting is fairly accurate in tarkov up to pretty good distances i'd say about from here to my dot at the end of the hall is about the maximum point distance shooting for most guns that you'd want to attempt um and of course, we all know that as we're point shooting, our laser sways with our movement. So you want to make sure that if you have a broken arm or broken leg, you're not moving and trying to point, sh point shoot, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> because obviously a broken leg is going to cause your, your laser to sway quite considerably. And there's really no way around that except painkilling uh, or by remaining stationary to shoot. So just keep that in mind. Don't try to be moving and shooting if you have broken limbs. Um, beyond that, your dot represents where you're going to scope in at so say that there's an enemy over there and you have to flick it then as you're flicking track your dot and when your dot gets close to the head continue tracking the target and visualizing the dot because your ads is going to go right on it so uh it can help a little bit with uh knowing where you're going to ads and that's pretty obvious but we're just going to cover everything in case people aren't thinking about everything all the time right and beyond that there's a couple tips i want to give you guys so first of all the dot and where you're aiming represents where your grenade is going to go if you were to throw a grenade. Uh, and then you just have to adjust for the weight of a grenade. So say that I wanted to get a grenade from here over to that over that box. You want to kind of crouch down for this one because you have to arc it. But you'd ADS like this, throw the grenade a little bit up because of the weight. And, you know, good enough right there. Pretty decent grenade. Uh, say I wanted to hook it around that corner right there. Then a little bit of forward movement. Oh my gosh, that's not how grenades are supposed to work. But, uh... 
you know, you get the gist. So you can use that to get it through windows and stuff a lot accurately. That's how you see streamers and stuff. They they do really, really accurate grenades. It's because you'll no, no, usually notice they use their laser to line it up or they aim at it first or they're just so good that they haven't memorized. And after a while of using the laser as a crutch, you get used to uh, exactly where it's going to be. All right. So beyond that, what else do we got? We got a... Uh, so in, in Tarkov, new players might not know, but a lot of people are griping about what they call an ADAD strafe meta. You might have seen it when a guy comes around a corner and then he comes back and bam, 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 bam. So you might have noticed when I was pretending to strafe and shoot, uh, if I move right, my laser after a delay goes to the left. And if I move to the left, my laser after a delay goes to the opposite end, right? So this movement prediction with your laser isn't random. It's always going to be consistent. Whoops, wrong button. Always going to be consistent. Forward moves it down, backwards moves it up. It's always inverse of your movement. So, what you can actually do, and a lot of people don't know this, and it works more effective with full auto, but it can help in a pinch uh, with semi auto. And all it's doing is helping you stay mobile. What you can do is you can. What it's going to do is it's going to level out your laser so that it doesn't bounce anymore. It just goes sideways on a horizontal plane. And. I should have brought a full auto weapon to show you guys, but you can see here with the laser, it's not bouncing up and down anymore. And really it doesn't bounce up and down with just a side movement. But if you mix in some other stuff, it, it may go upwards and downwards, but that's why it's ADAD, not WASD strafe meta, right? So basically what you want to do is if someone is behind cover, like uh, just peeking out right there, then what you want to do is move to cover and shoot. And as you're moving opposite direction, you're, you're laser is going to go outwards from your movement and you're going to be able to spray people holding narrow corners because your laser is going to basically adjust with your movement and hopefully that makes sense i'm going to showcase that a bit probably as i do a run because uh it's a it's a really it's a really important trick in in a tight situation when people are holding narrow corners or there's multiple people down a hallway and you don't want to deal with the recoil you don't want to deal with the guesswork and you don't have time to aim precisely you just kind of 80 80 strafe and it goes out like a scythe cutting off their heads at head height in a horizontal line all right and now besides that uh always have a laser if you're serious about point shooting you should always go into raid with a laser or a flashlight or both to be honest with you but lasers tighten the cone of fire from point firing significantly and it's uh pretty much a requirement in this game all right so we're gonna go now through the exercise with these scavs. I'm gonna show you guys um, how I started port fire practice. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you're brand new to the game is go in without a laser. Uh, people would say start with a laser, but I believe you should get the mechanics down naturally before you start using what could be defined as crutches, right? And it's totally doable without a laser. So I'm gonna go about until I find a scav, and kinda talk about. So every time you have a laser on, right? You can even bring one and turn off. Or just start with a laser, but visualize where the center of your screen is for the gun you're wielding. Every gun's going to kind of have a different uh, center of screen so that you can't just draw a dot on your monitor and make it work. Trust me, it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, try to run through factory using only point firing. And the good thing about the ash is it one shots them. So it's pretty fun to use and it sounds sick, but we're just going to... And if you have a semi-auto, just uh, don't hold back. You want to do two to four clicks. Otherwise, that happens, right? So you saw I came around the corner, and he was about here. And my aim was over here. So what I did, basically, I kept it still, and then I, I went to the right. Now, what that does is swings my gun out to the left, allowing me to continue to shoot around the corner as I'm getting back into cover, and also causing him to have to adjust his aim. Now, here's a good example. Right? So he doesn't have time to react, and of course, it's just a scab, but, you know for teaching purposes, right? So I peek out and I see him and I shoot and as I'm going back into cover, I shoot again because I know that my my laser is gonna sway out and you're able to tap people while you're going back into cover. And this is one of the fundamental mechanics of PvP movement. Uh, a quick tip about that is you wanna try to only go for right side peaks because your gun comes out first on a right side peak and this is common among most shooters. Whereas uh, for a left side peak, your gun comes out last and you're naturally exposing more of your body. I'm gonna get a clip of someone doing that so you guys can see from a third person perspective when I make the video on left versus right side peaks. But uh, basically the, the lesson to live by is always go for right side peaks. And if you're in a PVP against a, a good opponent, 
always try to only do right side peaks. And if you don't have a right side peak, say he's uh, behind this wall and you got a peak like this, then honestly, reposition until you can get a right side peak. You know, it's that important. Um, all right, so to continue on. So at this range, you know, I was visualizing where my laser was. And because it's semi-auto, like I said, just go ahead and drop the hammer because it's going to be a little bit random until you get the hang of it on a, on a second nature type basis. But until then, uh, just keep spamming because what you're trying to do with the gunfight is get a hit on them for the aim punch, basically. And especially on scavs, it makes them pretty much uh, take a break for a second and then you can finish them off. But whoever lands the first hit generally is going to win the gunfight, especially with a gun like this that can one-shot most people. Um, and then another little tip on that, uh, like I said, when your laser is up, you're going to ADS where the laser is. So if you come around a corner and you're surprised by a person being there, so you can ADS, and I, I hit a second button and under ADS, but you can see there a little bit of an example. Uh, I uh, was able to ADS as I'm already shooting. Those are some good examples. So I'm going to use the laser to start shooting. And then as I'm shooting, I'm going to ADS in uh, so that my shots stay on target the entire time. But I get a better sight picture through the off. Uh, if you even need to. None of those ranges I needed to uh, ADS in. But regardless. So if you can go through and you can wipe all these scabs without dying with just point firing or with a point firing mixture optic kind of mix, then you're going to be set. Um, this is how I develop my skills for actual Karkov PvP, and some people have asked me, you know, well, does it translate to online? Because, you know, I don't want to build bad habits against AI, I don't want to get used to things if they're not the way they are. And the short answer is yes, it translates to online if you act like it's online. If you practice like you want to play, your skills and your mechanics will develop, especially if you're following any of the guides I put up, because I would never steer you guys wrong with false information. Uh, all the things I'm going to teach you guys are things that I've done myself. And, oh my god, he's alive. This guy's a gamer. So a little quick tip there, you see I turned around and I looked down. This is to prevent him from getting a, uh, a line on my helmet. And I'm gonna trust my level five armor to take the hit from his little SKS PS rounds. You know, wow, that guy's tough, what? One second. These scabs are, bro. Oh my, I'm being outplayed. But, uh, yeah, you, you know, it's it's not easy if you do it on the hardest difficulty like I am, but I, trust me, when I first started, I was, I could even barely kill Scav on easy. We're talking about the first time I started playing, but uh, with point firing and all that, I had to do this probably for about six hours before I was good, but you want to get your point firing skill to the point where it's second nature, to where, like... If someone surprises you, you can flick to them real quick with a headshot, especially uh, with guns that are really, really good for point firing with high RPM, like a like a HK. Oh my! Like that. You want to be able to do that to be able to do flick point fire headshots. And trust me, if you if you develop that skill here, if you can do it here against the enemy, you can do it against a player. Because the players have usually superior movement. Um, but trust me, you'd be surprised how many kills I get when... So right there, a good example of the AD, AD strafe. I came around a corner, he was pointed at me, I was surprised, and there was another guy behind him, so... AD, AD strafe to... Oh! It's, like I said, it's easier with the fully auto, because I'll have more bullets, but... It kind of, uh, levels it out like that, and it's not always good to use, like, there. There we go. Uh... Yeah, not much to say about that. You'll get the hang of using your movement to adjust your laser. I'm not correcting with just my hand. I'm correcting with my uh, character movement as well. And also, uh, but it's hard It's hard to describe exactly the moves I'm making because it's for such a short fraction and it's kind of intuitive now. But yeah, that's the gist of it. Just practice until it's intuitive for you as well. Uh, oh, what? These guys are tough. But yeah, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up there. There's not too much more to cover. If you guys have seen my factory survival vid, then uh, basically this is what I did to develop the skills to be able to do that.
just run through on different difficulties until you can manage to hang with them for as long as you want. And you'll notice you're going into raids and you're snapping crazy point fire headshots at all the PMCs and you're going to feel like a god. So yeah. Wish I had shot them. That would have been a nice finish. Thank you.